history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. Live from KPRC Channel 2 News, Decision 2020, the Texas primary. Super Tuesday slowdown. Voters stuck in long lines for hours. Tonight, the explanation that we're getting from election officials. Plus, a showdown between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Biden's momentum turning the Democratic race for president into a whole new contest. Rain returns for our Wednesday, the timeline on when it arrives and how long it lasts. Hello, we thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Dominique Soxa. Good evening, I'm Jonathan Martinez. We will be scrolling the results at the bottom of your screen throughout this newscast. Of course, the biggest prize of the night in our Texas primary, the race for the White House. Texas has 228 delegates up for grabs. And we begin with the Democrats tonight. If you have been watching our news, especially NBC Nightly News, you have seen the numbers. And it continues to be a horse race between Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden. Right now, Sanders leads with 29% of the vote. Biden at 25. We've got Bloomberg at 18 and Warren at 13. This has gone back and forth throughout the whole night, so still too close to call. And no surprise in the Republican primary, President Trump uh, easily winning with 94% of the GOP vote. Now across 14 states, there are 1,334 delegates in play tonight. 1,991 delegates are needed to secure the Democratic nomination. Tonight, after a poor showing across the country, former New York Mayor Michael Bloomberg says he's going to reassess his campaign tomorrow. In the meantime, Bernie Sanders' campaign is holding a watch party out in Montrose. And Channel 2's Sion Rhodes is live at Revelry on Richmond. Sion? And the crowd erupting just moments ago as they saw on TV that Bernie Sanders is definitely leading in California. One of the two big prizes, California number one, Texas number two. But the crowd still, of course, waiting here to hear the final numbers on Texas. That's what they say they have worked so hard for for the several past months here in Texas. They say no campaign can compare to the ground game that Bernie Sanders has put the effort in here in Texas and in Harris County. They are feeling confident that he will pull off a win of this Texas primary tonight. The candidate himself speaking earlier tonight from his home state. Let's take a listen to what he said earlier. We are going to defeat Trump because we are putting together an unprecedented grassroots, multi-generational, multi-racial movement. <laughs> So the crowd is 
is still here at the revelry on Richmond in Montrose, waiting the final numbers, but again, feeling confident that their candidate will be able to pull off a win here in Texas. Back to you. Thank you, Sion. And Channel 2's Jacob Rascone is live at the Harris County Democrats Watch Party in Edo. That's where Joe Biden supporters are thrilled at the former vice president's resurgence. And we have talked, Dominic, to a lot of Democratic voters tonight who wanted to vote for Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Joe Biden. And a lot of those who wanted to vote for Joe Biden are just thrilled at the momentum. What a difference a few days makes. The momentum behind Joe Biden tonight has been thrilling for them to watch. And they are certain that whatever happens tonight in Texas, that he will be the nominee. Here's Joe Biden in Los Angeles just moments ago. Our campaign reflects the diversity of this party and this nation. And that's how it should be. Because we need to bring everybody along. Everybody. We want a nominee who will beat Donald Trump. And right after or during his speech there, a couple of protesters rushed the stage that was in Los Angeles. Those protesters were quickly escorted off the stage. I will tell you, because this is the watch party for the Harris County Democrats, we meet a lot of people who disagree on what is happening and what might happen after Super Tuesday. But one thing that they can all agree on is they do want to beat Donald Trump. They just disagree on how they'll get there. It's going to be a very interesting night. Everyone will stay up here watching at the Harris County Watch Party. We're live here tonight. Jacob Brascone, KPRC Channel 2 News. Thank you, Jacob. And a large turnout this Super Tuesday resulted in some long lines at voting centers across the Houston area. Channel 2's Bill Barajas is live at Texas Southern University where people have been voting hours after the polls officially closed. Bill, good evening. Well, at its peak, people here at TSU say they've waited about four hours to get to the front of the line. The front of the line just behind me there. The line has quite dindle, dwindled down since we first got here earlier today. The line was as far as the eye could see. We actually walked that line from the front door to the end of the line, and it actually took us about two minutes and 11 seconds. One of the problems, just eight voting machines. The county clerk's office telling us they deployed another 14 to help with the amount of voters waiting, which seemed to help speed up the process. Now, I want to bring in Mr. Ricky Ford. Mr. Ricky Ford, I want to yes. interrupt you just for a sure, second, sir. Sure. You came out here to vote, saw that there was a long line. Talk to us about what you decided to do then. Well, I literally, after being in line for so extremely long, I literally decided to go to my car and get several instruments, and, and actually also a stool and to come out and entertain the people in order to take their minds away from this physical struggle, this and, mental and physical struggle. And how long have you been waiting? Hours and hours. And just literally, I had to go and get a stool because, you know, my feet, my legs. Well, you're almost there. We wish you the very best. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Ford. Again, the line's starting to dwindle down now. People coming out of the library here at TSU. Now, Texas Organizing Project, a nonprofit which organizes the black and Latino communities, alleges that the long lines was part of a ploy to discourage minority voters. In a statement, they said Top has been working for years to grow the black and Latino vote in Harris County. So we're thrilled to see this historic turnout. But it's equally infuriating that our teammates, vote, that our communities vote, rather is being thwarted by long lines and malfunctioning machines said crystal zermino we also asked the harris county clerk's office they responded with this my office proposed a joint primary election which would have allowed any voter to vote on any available machine at each polling location this was rejected by the parties which means both parties have an equal allocation of machines for each polling location that from county clerk diane trotman and again people coming out to congratulations and cheers as they're able to vote the line slowly starting to dwindle down here. The elections office telling us they will remain open until everybody is able to cast their ballots. Live from TSU, Bill Barajas, KPRC Channel 2 News. I detect a little George Michael and careless whisper in the background. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Just a little bit. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Hey, there's a heated race in the 22nd Congressional District. Yes, Republican Congressman Pete Olson is retiring at the end of this term with some well-known names running to replace him. Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nels and a Bush, Pierce Bush.
Currently, Troy Nell's in first place, 44% of the vote. Kathleen Wall actually in second with 19%, and Pierce Bush in third place at 14%. On the Democratic side, we're taking a look at the numbers here. A couple of familiar names as well, but this one does not appear to be going into any type of runoff anytime soon. Treat Preston Kulkarni, who actually took on Olson back in 2018. That was a tight race. Of course, Olson came out on top. He appears to be heading this go-round to the general election. Channel 2's Keith Garvin, live at Nell's campaign headquarters over at Freedom Hall in Richmond tonight. Keith? Hey there, Jonathan Dominique. I know a uh, saxophone here. Just a few supporters remain, but excitement was at a fever pitch when a very confident and very pleased Sheriff Troy Nails addressed this crowd here at Freedom Hall. Nails arrived here just over an hour ago, around 9 o'clock, and when he came through at that point, he had a commanding lead over challengers Kathleen Wall and Pierce Bush. At that point, Nails had 45% of the vote. Wall was in second place with 18%, and Bush was tied for third place. After shaking hands, Nails told the crowd he not only he was not worried about winning the May runoff, but he predicted he would beat the Democratic candidate in November by double digits. Nails, needless to say, is very pleased with his campaign so far. We ran a very strong campaign, a solid campaign, a clean campaign, quite honestly, talking about the issues that we face in this country, whether it's our, our, our poorest border, our, our national debt. Uh, we, we just feel really, really good about where we are, and we're going to continue on with this momentum. We're going to build on this momentum uh, for this runoff, no matter who that may be. And that runoff opponent at this point likely appears to be Kathleen Wall. If Nails is successful in that runoff in May, his likely Democratic challenger will be Sri Preston Kolkarni, who had a commanding lead in the Democratic primary tonight, as you all showed. Kolkarni only lost to outgoing Congressman Pete Olson by five points in 2018. So it may not be a super easy race for either side. Reporting live from Richmond, Keith Garvin, KPRC Channel 2 News. All right, we will wait to see. Thanks a lot for that, Keith. Now to the race to replace Fort Bend County Sheriff Troy Nels. This right here, look at the numbers. Yes, Nels's twin brother Trevor is in the lead with 83%, a large margin to John Minshew at 14%. On the other side, the Democratic side specifically, looking like a runoff will be the case here for Aaron Fagan, Eric Fagan, that is, with 37% of the votes. Janine Hughes as well with 33%. That is going to be a close one right there, so expect the runoff. We move on to Harris County Sheriff. Democrat Ed Gonzalez is the incumbent as we pull up those numbers. Uh, uh, sheriff in the lead here, 74% to Jerome Moore's 19%. On the other side, it's going to be the Republican side, specifically Joe Dana, familiar name out there, leading with 54% of the vote. No runoff appearing to be the case in this particular race. And now we're moving on to Harris County District Attorney Kim Og, the Democrat in the lead at 59% to Audia Jones's 22%. On the other side, Republicans, specifically here, we've got Mary Nan Huffman with 68% of the votes, nearly 50,000 more votes to her second person there in line, Lloyd Wayne Oliver with only 19%. And now we go to the race for U.S. Senate. Republican John Cornyn is the incumbent, and he is substantially in the lead with 78 percent over Dwayne Stovall's 11 percent. On the other side there, speaking Democratic side, we've got uh, a tight one there. Mary M.J. Hager with 25 percent of the votes, about 220,000 votes, second to Royce, uh, Royce West there, who's got about 14 percent of the votes. And Mary, by the way, is a veteran and a mother in the race. Let's go on to U.S. Rep District uh, 18, Democratic. Congresswoman Sheila Jackson Lee, the incumbent, also the leader at 81% to Mark Flores is 7%. A very familiar name there, not having any problems on that side. On the Republican side, Wendell Champion's got 35% of the vote right now. Of course, votes still needing to be counted there. Robert M. Sedena with 19% of the votes, along with T.C. Manning. Another familiar name showing up in U.S. Rep. District 9, the Democrat Al Green, also in the lead at 87%. No problem with him. On the other side, the Republican numbers coming in as well. Right now, Johnny Teague with about 45% of the votes. Unfortunately, doesn't appear as if that's going to be enough to get him without the runoff. Julian mm -hmm. Martinez with 38% of the vote. Again, some of those votes still needing to come in, though. That's right. And now let's take a look at U.S. Rep. District 8. Republican Congressman Kevin Brady is the incumbent. And you're seeing a trend here. All the incumbents in substantial leads, either in the 70s or 80 percentile. We've got Kevin Brady at 81% to Kirk Osborne, 16%. On the other side, the Democratic side, specifically, we We've got Elizabeth Hernandez with 58%, roughly about 8,400 votes to Laura Jones is 42%. And again, we've talked about this. Unless they get that 50% edge, they will have to go to a runoff.
runoff in May. Correct. And ultimately the general election to take on their competitors come November. Mm -hmm. We've posted results from every local race on our website. You can see them all right now and click to Houston.com slash decision 2020. Meanwhile, dozens dead and dozens more missing. Coming up, our Roseanne Aragon live in Tennessee, where a tornado outbreak has left behind a swath of destruction. And we're watching this system that's been out in West Texas. It's beginning to make a move toward us, and that's our Wednesday. Here's a look at the future cast. You can see that winding up in that line right there. I'm going to slow that down coming up. We'll talk about that because that's where I see the potential for the worst weather tomorrow. So some fog issues again overnight when the storms are most likely to hit the area and your future cast rain amounts straight ahead in weather. What 10. Developing tonight, voting hours being extended out in Tennessee this evening after a string of tornadoes tore across the state, killing at least 24 people there. One twister hitting the heart of Nashville. The devastation widespread as authorities continue to search piles of rubble for any survivors. Channel 2's Roseanne Aragon live in Nashville tonight with the newest information for us. Roseanne? Dominique, there are no words to describe the devastation here in Nashville and the loss felt around the state. The rubble here goes for miles. This behind me used to be an auto parts store. But amongst the destruction are helping hands who believe this community will pull through. From one nightfall here. There was no stop in that. And it was just came out of the sky. To another, a day after devastating tornadoes tore through Tennessee eastward. But the glimpse of utter chaos in central Tennessee doesn't reveal the state's biggest loss. At least 25 lives lost too soon, the death toll rising. In Putnam County, 80 miles east of Nashville, at least 77 people are unaccounted for. There are folks uh, missing. We're, we have deployed teams across the state in a search and ref, ref, uh, rescue effort. Darkness is here with tens of thousands of people without power. But near this now unfamiliar O'Reilly Auto Parts, the rubbled parking lot, and this empty Kroger in Germantown, you can hear. Free food here, free food here, free hot dogs. The sound of hope through people. Just come down and get a drink, a hot dog, you know, something to eat and, you know, stay warm. Hot meals filling stomachs. And it just make you happy giving back to people that need it, you know. If it was me, I would hope somebody would help me the same way. And filling hearts, showing where there is darkness, there is light. Be a blessing back. And that's the only payment this food truck owner was asking for is taking kindness and paying it forward. That's a lesson in life that transcends geographical lines. We can all learn from it. Reporting live from Nashville, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC, Channel 2 News. You found the beauty in the rubble there, Roseanne. Thank you so much. Touching wow. Story. Thank you for that. It's incredible to see all of that yeah. destruction and just it, overnight. And there's no good place for that to happen. No. But the airport was just to the south and the Grand Ole Opry just to the north. So it missed right it missed a down. lot of, of, of some monument areas sure. yeah. of yeah. Nashville, which I guess is a good thing. But sure. gosh, that's just But a ton of, of construction on the east side of yep. Nashville, just like east downtown here is building up. The same thing over that's there. That's right. Yeah, it's a very hip place. Very uh -huh. yeah, happening. Up and coming. Shame. Heart goes out to them. All right, this is a pretty shot, not a sunset, but still pretty. Yeah. Isn't that nice in the clouds that Ron took a shot of? I see a, see a bird, a, a bird. plane. <laughs> I see clouds. <laughs> yeah. I see Super Frank. Beautiful clouds. Super Frank. <laughs> 71. East Southeast winds at five right now. Galveston still dealing with a little fog. 68. East winds at nine. So I think the fog's going to be fairly prevalent right now. Three quarter mile visibility there. One and a half at Angleton. Three in Pearland. Seven at Hobby. So this is going to continue to create. And just in time, we start to get light rain in here tomorrow morning. So between the rain and the fog, it's going to be a slow commute. Look at these temperatures. 10 o'clock at night, it's only 70, 71 degrees. So it's not going to go down much. Humidity's way up there, 90, 93, 81%. So it's a juicy atmosphere for not only the rain, but the fog and the winds are calm. So any fog that forms is not going to be broken up quickly. So we're watching for this system. This is an aerial flood advisory back out here in West Texas. They've had less than two inches of rain, but it just doesn't take much back there. But that's what's going on with that low as far as any watches or warnings. There's not much of that. We'll continue obviously to watch this whole system as it moves across. So that's what we have right now. It's always important to look at
look at that and initialize the Futurecast, which does a pretty good job with this. Uh, this is the RPM. I want to take you through this, and you'll notice what happens. First of all, this is 6, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, so the fog and the light rain. The light rain obviously would dissolve a lot of the fog, but the two together are just going to be really messy. It's that system where you see the orange and red. That's the front that at 10 o'clock in the morning is getting just past Austin, so it starts to make a play for our viewing area about 11 o'clock. This is the 12:30 uh, right through. Looks like uh, Hempstead up through Conroe. A little Boeing effect that always indicates the possibility of some strong winds with this. So gusts to 40 and 60 miles an hour, especially up to the north. And then two o'clock, the fronts continuing to move through Houston and notice at the coast by three, four o'clock. So it looks like we get a bit of a break as we go into the afternoon with light rain as we go into tomorrow night. Just some wraparound showers. So the window for any severe weather looks to be about 10 to 2 tomorrow across southeast Texas. So that's what we'll watch for. You can see the rain amounts are not impressive. Up to the north, maybe a half an inch, six tenths of an inch in Cleveland less than that in Houston and then down to maybe a tenth of an inch as we go even farther south. So it's an 80 percent chance for the showers. We'll look for Thursday and Friday to be on the quiet side. In fact, cool and pleasant Saturday and Sunday. Not bad at all. The clocks go forward an hour on Sunday. 40, 70 percent chance of rain as we headed to Monday and Tuesday of next week. But tomorrow, clearly the morning is going to be a mess and I think the afternoon commute may get by OK, mm -hmm. but uh, be between morning and noon, it's going to be, Yeesh. I think, messy around okay. here. And avoid it at all. Watch Brita tomorrow morning. That's a plan. Thanks. All right. Thank all right. you. Randy joining us now off night for the Rockets, but high school teams seem pretty busy. This is a fun time of the year right yeah. now. State week for the girls. Side Creek's going to San Antonio. Boys teams headed to regionals. We've got a couple of stops and some big matchups tonight on their road to a state championship. Plus, Justin Verlander, 23 days away from his opening day start. He made his spring debut today. We'll take you to Florida. Much more coming up. Easton. All right, welcome into the Xfinity Sports Desk tonight. We start with the Astros. If you're counting, 23 days out from opening day at Minute Maid Park, Justin Verlander made his first spring start today. JV on the mound in uh, Jupiter taking on the Cardinals. Uh, went two and two-thirds innings. There he is on the bump. Uh, three hits allowed, including a home run. But he also uh, had the breaking ball work and the heater going as well. He struck out three as he gets ready for that opening day start. Also today, Jose Arquiti battling for a starting role. Struck out four and three innings. Forrest Whitley struck out two in one inning of work as well. Two games left on the schedule as U of H chases after conference championship. A trip to UConn is next for the Cougs. Vanessa Richardson on campus today. Calvin Sampson has seen his young Cougar team come a long way this season. You, know, you don't hit the ground and be first team out conference in November. Houston has grown since November, enough to stay in contention for the conference title as they head to UConn this Thursday. Uh, we're feeling good, but we know it's, the, it's their senior night and it's the last night uh, there in uh, American Conference, so it's going to be a tough, tough game. It's going to be a loud game. Anybody who watches this Cougars basketball team can see how much they've grown throughout the course of the season, and especially the team's freshmen. Head coach Calvin Sampson said that growth will be crucial as we head into March basketball. There's a difference in November freshmen and February freshmen. They, they have to fail. You know, and um, if you coach long enough, you get your kids to understand, don't be afraid of it. Reigning AAC Freshman of the Week, Marcus Sasser, has seen his own growth as well. All my reason, all my decisions, you know, I think I'm becoming better without turning the ball over, becoming a better point guard and becoming a better leader. With the Cougs, Vanessa Richardson, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. All right, Vanessa, thanks. Hey, this just in. Texas pulls off a stunner, a late three-point shot off the backboard by Matt Woo. Coleman, the third. Longhorns beat the Sooners 52-51 to keep their tournament hopes alive. All right, high school hoops tonight in Missouri City. First stop, Shadow Creek facing Madison tonight. First half, Madison's Jacoby Brown drills the three-pointer. Nice touch right there. Marlins down one. Shadow Creek then goes on a run. Ramon Walker knocks down the tray. And then Will Young with the steal and the slam. He's coming at you. Shadow Creek takes this one 75-61. Baylor signee LJ Cryer and Morton Ranch taking on Fort Ben Travis tonight. Cryer wasted no time. The dish to Joseph Cadet for the slam. Then off the steal coming up. Cryer is going up strong for the deuce. This guy can play. Went to overtime. Mavericks hold him off 98-94. All right, last stop, Rodeo Rough Ride of the Night at NRG. Our first one on opening night, Saddle Bronc Cowboy, Rusty Wright aboard a horse named Sugar Rich. Check it out right here. It doesn't last long. 
Whoops. And down he goes. The horse goes down too, but he's oh, good news as I always like to say that cowboy and the horse were okay. All okay. Oh. How about that for the first That's rough ride? That's a nasty ah, that's first doozy. rough ride. He's gonna feel that for about. Glad to know they're both doing well though. Uh, they are. Scary. We always like to check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. We'll be right back. At Auto Nation. Breaking news, polls have just closed in California. 415 delegates up for grabs there. Only 3% of the votes have been counted, but the Associated Press has already declared Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders the winner. Former Vice President Joe Biden will have to clear 15% of the vote to get any delegates there. And we've posted results from every local Super Tuesday race right now on our website. You can find them all on click2houston.com slash decision2020. Thank you so much for joining us. The Tonight Show is next. And we look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Have a good night.